then. Hi, I'm Jim Covington. Today is July 26, 2016. I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISB State House Review. Got a number of bills that have been signed into law. Uh, your PDF that should be attached to your screen will give a, more, a little more detail since there's so many of them. Uh, I'm going to kind of buzz through them. Um, as the 60-day drop date uh, comes up on us for a lot of these bills, there should be more and more bills signed uh, this week and then uh, through most of August. The first one is, uh, is on amending property crimes. It's uh, Public Act 99-631, introduced by uh, Senator Steve Stadelman of Rockford and Letitia Swal Representative Letitia Wallace of Rockford, and it increases the threshold amount for damage to property that makes it a felony or enhances the felony, a uh, higher class. Currently, that's $300. Uh, this requires it to be uh, $500. All the bills that I'm going to talk about, by the way, and I won't bring this up again, um, have a January 1, 2017 effective date. The next bill amends the FOIA Act. It's Public Act 99-586, introduced by Representative Terry Bryan of Mount Vernon, uh, Senator Christine Redondo of Lamont, and basically it does two things. Uh, it allows the court to impose an, an additional penalty up to $1,000 a day for a violation if a public body fails to comply with a court order after 30 days, uh, the court's order is not appealed or stayed, and the court does not grant the public body additional time to comply with a court order to disclose uh, public records. And that applies on, for actions on or after January 1. It also provides that a requester that files an action seeking to enforce a binding opinion will have a rebuttable presumption from the that the public body willfully and intentionally failed to comply with this act if the Attorney General issues a binding opinion under Section 9.5 and the public body does not file for administrative review nor comply with it within 35 days after the binding opinion is served on the public body. This uh, presumption may be rebutted by the public body showing that it's making a good faith effort to comply with it, but just simply couldn't do it. And that will apply to binding opinions that the Attorney General requested or issued on or after January 1, 2017. The next bill creates the Local Government Travel Expense Control Act, Public Act 99-604, introduced by Representative David McSweeney from Cary and Senator Tom Cullen Cullerton from Villa Park. And it requires that school districts, units of local governments, and non-home rule units of local government regulate the travel, meal, and lodging expenses of their officers and employees and members of their governing boards. It prohibits reimbursement of entertainment expenses. And for members of the board, any expenses must be approved at an open meeting, um, a duly noticed open meeting. And for any of the employees, if the, it goes above their maximum set rate for reimbursement. The next bill is the uh, is uh, amends the Common Interest Community Association Act, Public Act 99-627, introduced by Senator Bill Hain from Alton, uh, Representative Dan Beiser of Alton, and allows an association to correct an error, omission, or inconsistency in the community instruments of the association by an amendment adopted by two thirds of the board of directors without a membership vote. And this applies to correct an omission, error, or inconsistency so that the community instruments conform to the act or another applicable law. The next bill uh, is an omnibus uh, juvenile justice uh, change. It's uh, Public Act 99-628. It's introduced by Senator uh, Kwame Raul of Chicago and Representative Lane Neckers from Buffalo Gold, uh, Grove. It makes numerous changes to juvenile justice law and post-conviction procedures. Uh, among those changes, it prohibits minors from being admitted to the Department of Juvenile Justice unless they are found guilty of a felony or first degree murder and exempt from some of those felonies, uh, felony incarceration for criminal trespass to residence, criminal damage or defacement to property, disorderly conduct, or obstructing justice. The next bill creates the cell site simulator device. Uh, well, it's not the name of the act, but that's what it does. Basically, it regulates the use of stingrays that law enforcement is using to simulate a cell tower to trick cell phones into using them. This bill prevents law enforcement from doing that unless they get a court order based on probable cause and may be only used to locate or track the location of a communications device. 
The next uh, act amends the short-term guardian statute. It's Public Act 99-599, introduced by Representative uh, Patty Bellock of Westmont and Senator Pam Althoff of uh, McHenry, and allows a parent or guardian who's serving in the armed forces and on active duty to appoint a short-term guardian for more than 365 days. This appointment may not expe exceed the period of active duty service plus 30 days. The next bill creates the Land Trust Beneficiary Rights Act. It's introduced, uh, it's Public Act 99-609, introduced by Representative Ann Williams of Chicago and Senator Mike Hastings from Matson. And it provides that the rights of a beneficial owner may not be impaired in any way by the change of trustees if the identity of the trustee of a land trust has been changed by virtue of sale, assignment, appointment, or otherwise. But the beneficial owner, owners of the land trust, remain unchanged. And I think our final bill uh, it amends both the Condominium Property Act and the Common Interest Community Association Act. It's Public Act 99-612, introduced by S Senator uh, John Mulrow of Chicago, Representative uh, Kelly Cassidy of Chicago. It redefines, quote, acceptable technological means, close quote, to mean any generally available technology that, by rule of the association, is deemed to provide reasonable security, reliability, identification, and veri verifiability. And it allows the acceptable technological means to be used to conduct association business, such as a notice required to be sent or received, signature, vote, consent, or approval required to be obtained, and the performance of obligations or exercise of rights. It does not apply to any notices required under the forcible entry and detainer article or in, in connection with foreclosure proceedings in enforcement of any lien rights under this act or those acts. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week.